So we all know the advice with investing in stock markets. It's that you buy an index following fund and you just keep holding on to that fund. And that over time, the market may go up and down, but it's getting that long-term benefit that is the, the key thing. So we're, we're told that, and yeah, actually that, that is quite good advice. If you want to just save for your retirement, put your money into a, into something over your whole working life, and then at the end of that, you ought to have a, a very good return. But that picture is though a, a bit of an oversimplification, and anyone looking at the market over the last two years will be looking at this sort of picture here and thinking, well, what is this market doing? Is it going up? Is it going down? Um, is it flat? How long do I need to keep investing in this for? And and that actually is quite an important question because not everyone is at the stage in their life when they say, for example, if you, for some reason, um, happen to have a large amount of cash that you need to invest, is it the right thing to do to put that into the share market if you're only going to be able to keep it there for say five, 10, even 15 years? How long is long enough to get this benefit? And also looking at today's market, how long might we expect this kind of going nowhere pattern that we see here to, to continue for? So the conventional wisdom is that the market looks something like I'm drawing now, so that it goes up pretty much constantly over time, but it will have these interruptions where it, it's not moving up. If you need to explain this to people, then yeah, of course, this is um, this is a good way of explaining it to them. And what you say to them is that what you shouldn't do is to try to time um, exiting and entering the market. So for example, selling here and then buying buying back here. Although ideally you'd like to do that, what you're told is in practice, you can't really do that because the market is too unpredictable. It's too difficult to, to time these spots. So, th so this is a nice way of expressing this in words. The trouble is that it doesn't really provide you with that quantitative guidance as to how often should you expect that to happen and how long should that happen? And once again, you know, you, you do really need to know that if you're thinking of investing in shorter term periods, say, do you, do you go for a, a term deposit that might pay you a nice fixed interest rate, or do you put it into the share market hoping for a better return? Even if you're, you only have, might even only be two or three years to invest that money before you need it for something else. Is, is that necessarily a good idea? We'll now take a look at the much, much longer term. So this is the S&P or Standard & Poor's Composite Index, I think, taken from publicly accessible data used by Robert Schiller in his book, Irrational Exuberance. Now, what you need to notice here is that this is actually a log plot on the y-axis. So what we're told about share markets is that they behave as though they were a compounding interest rate of above 10% over a long enough period. Now, the nice thing about a log plot is that if you plot something that is compounding and increasing like compound interest, then on this log plot, what you should see is a straight line. So the question here really is that if, if the share market or the, the US stock market in this case has really been compounding year on year on, on average, then we ought to be able to put fit roughly a straight line to this plot. And while it's clearly not really a straight line because there is a bit of curve to it, it wouldn't be unreasonable to say, well, you can roughly say fit a straight line like that through it. And certainly for the last half of this graph, that's not a bad straight line fit at all. And that, yeah, there, there are bumps up and down above and below this line, but that, that's nothing too much to worry about if you are in it for the long term. But the real question that we're interested in here is how, how steady is this growth? How, and when we have periods where it's not growing, how long do those, those last? How well does it match this picture we had before of the market going up sort of like this? You can see looking at the real data here that it, it certainly isn't as periodic as 
this idealized picture that we talked about before. So what is going on with this market? Well, we can find periods in here by visual inspection where the market has been really quite flat. So that would be a period here and another one up here and here. And you could argue if you, um, if this peak here was just a blip that maybe this is quite flat right the way through this whole period here and you might say well okay well so what these are this is these are pretty small periods compared to the entire plot but the thing that you really need to notice here is that these aren't small periods at all this one here is actually nearly a 20 year period and this one here is roughly a 10 year period and the bottom one is the worst of all. Uh, it goes for more than 40 years. So flip that around and say, well, where has the market been growing? And that question is almost more interesting to me. So you can see you've got this period, say, here. You've got a period here. And I guess you could say you've probably got one there. And also this more recent period here. Now, what's really interesting is that this is clearly, these periods of growth are clearly in the minority. So what that means is that if you missed out any of these periods, then you won't be getting your 10% uh, plus compounding effect going on. So if you were unlucky enough to start investing here, and then you closed out your investments here, which is something like a 30 year period, which might be roughly how long you might get to save for your retirement for, for many people, then really your, your gains are not all that spectacular. And this is the missing piece of the puzzle that really doesn't get spoken about. The reality is that if you want to be sure of getting this big return over time, you really do need to be in there for multiple decades. So the, the sooner you can start investing, the better. This gets even more interesting when you look at the period from 1870 up until about 1950, that if you look at this chart, wow, this is a much, much shallower slope to our line during this period. And really the, the fluctuations, the ups and downs in this chart really are, are much more impressive than the long-term growth. So is the conventional wisdom right? Well, yes, is the simple answer to that, yes. But there are things that should be explained better to people. And one of them is that it really is. And yeah, I know that this is what people get told. It, it's important to maximize your time in the market, but just the extent to which that is necessary, I think often gets a bit glossed over. And it's also really important to understand that the market can go through quite long static phases where you just aren't going to see much growth in your investment. And that this can have really quite serious implications for someone who needs, say, to be able to take their money out for some reason. Or even just when you happen to retire, if it happens to be a, a bad period where there, there has been a significant decline, it may take some significant time for, for the market to be able to recover from that decline. But I don't want you guys to get worried about any of this. This is just my personal observations and opinions about how the Dow Jones Index and the S&P 500 Index have behaved over time. It's absolutely not intended as any sort of advice about how you should invest. And the other thing is this is only really part of the story as well, because if you are invested in a retirement fund, for example, chances are that it's actually a mixture of stock markets and different types of investments. It's not just, well, usually won't just be one index unless it's something like an exchange traded fund. And even though most world stock markets do tend to just follow what the US market does, there still is somewhat independence between the different markets and how they behave. The other thing is that even when share markets are going sideways, the stocks are still paying dividends and depending on which stock market you are invested in, these dividends can be quite a reasonable return still on your investment. That said, for the US stock market, prices are usually anticipating growth rather than a high dividend return. 
But if you're in a situation where you're not sure how to invest your money, the best thing to do is to seek advice from a qualified financial advisor.